less than a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. A bubble much smaller than a fraction of an atom forms. This is the universe. It is unimaginably small and unimaginably hot. Within this bubble, the four known forces of nature, gravity, electromagnetism, plus the strong and the weak nuclear forces, are a combined superforce. Gravity suddenly splits off from the superforce as the universe expands. As the universe expands, it cools, which somehow sets off a burst of energy fueling the hyperinflation of the universe, suggested by Alan Guth. This inflation locks in the uniformity of the universe pictured by the WMAP satellite. The universe is still less than a second old when the superforce decays into the separate forces of nature. Roughly three minutes after the Big Bang, the temperature of the universe has dropped to a mere one billion degrees Fahrenheit, cool enough for atomic nuclei to form. The element hydrogen forms. Some hydrogen atoms fuse to create helium, as proposed by Gamow and Alpha. 380,000 years later, and light travels through the darkness. The burst of radiation that Penzias and Wilson found happens now. A billion years after the Big Bang, stars take shape, producing the heavier elements like nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon, as Hoyle predicted. Roughly nine billion years out, matter and gravity combine to form a perfectly typical star. Pressure creates heat at its core. This heat triggers thermonuclear fusion. A star is born. Stellar outflow clears away residual gases. A circumstellar disk of dust remains that eventually accrete into an entourage of planets and moons. One of these lumps of stardust, after being pummeled for eons by residual solar debris, has temperatures warm enough to allow hydrogen dioxide, water, to build up in the atmosphere. Liquid water gathers on the planet's surface. Underwater, mysterious chemical reactions ultimately form life. 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang, our universe is now 156 billion light years across. The sky is full of stars. Our solar system has eight planets, more or less. The third planet is nearly covered in carbon-based life forms. Some are just realizing what infinitely small specks they are in the grand scheme of things.